this week I was going to go out on a couple of trips. So today I was going to take you on a trip up to the hills and I was going to go and look at a little tourist attraction that I've wanted to get to for a few months. I've been waiting for the weather to change. Monday and Tuesday were supposed to be really nice. We had a really hot weekend and then literally overnight the Monday and Tuesday weather has gone and we're back to what you might call normal spring weather. I'm back in my green khaki coat. So that's going to have to go on hold. This week I was also hoping to go to the cinema because I still have free tickets to use and I wanted to go and see the new Planet of the Apes movie but there are certain ways I like to do my cinema trips which includes only going on a weekday and only going in the morning so I can get home before the scores chuck out and all of the showings start one o'clock or later and the other problem is that this film is stupidly long it's over two hours and I think it was Oppenheimer that was really long and it became a real struggle to sit through it without wanting to go to the loo and Watch Kermode and Mayo's review of this movie, and they said it takes a while to get going. And in fact, most of the film is just like a build-up to the the end of it. And I thought, if I go to a one o'clock showing, I'm not going to get home till probably nearer five o'clock because I'm going to get caught in all the traffic coming out of the city and do I want it that much and guess what I don't so I'm just going to wait until it I can get it on a download or something I can't be bothered I hate the really long movies because I can't sit in a cinema for two and a half hours now I need to go to the low by the time you've been out to the low and found your way back to your seat you've missed chunk of the story. So I'm not going to bother. Instead, I'm going to Sainsbury's. I have lots of nectar points and I want to buy a missing ingredient for a it's not really a cooking project. There's no cooking involved. But, it's something I do every year, and something I'd like to show you, um, and it involves foraging. So I'm going to buy the missing ingredient now, which is granulated sugar. And then, on another post, I am going to show you how I do this thing, which I think you will enjoy. So I'm off to spend some nectar points because free shopping is fun. So I thought I'd run through with you what I got. So very few of the nectar points that I earn come from shopping at Sainsbury's. I have my nectar card linked to my eBay account but that doesn't earn very much because I don't shop there very often. Um, but I use two survey sites called Nectar Canvas and eRewards, which both pay only in Nectar Points. And the eRewards program, you have to earn a thousand points, which converts into a thousand Nectar Points and thus is a, worth five pounds. And that gets dropped straight into your Nectar account. It takes about three working days, but it's not too long. And then with the Nectar Canvas, that is a survey site that is directly linked to the Sainsbury's um, Nectar card. So 
as you earn points they get dropped straight into your account. So this morning before I went shopping I had something like £86 worth of um, nectar points on my account so that's why I've gone to Sainsbury's today to buy some things. Now when you spend nectar points they, you, you can only spend them in the blocks of £2.50 worth so £2.50, £5.00, £7.50, £10.00 so whenever I go and I'll take my calculator and I'll work out how much I've physically spent and then to get me as close to the limit so that I pay as little actual cash as possible um, I'll work out how much I need so that's why I've ended up buying today some things that I wasn't actually planning to buy because the things that um, I wanted didn't come up close enough to the margin where I wouldn't then spend much anyway so the things that I wanted to buy were I needed sugar now this is for a foraging recipe which I'm going to do a separate vlog on when I go and forage the things and then show you how to make it so that's there for a particular reason I bought two of those they were one pound nine each I also bought some dental tape because I think I'm running low that was pretty cheap um, I also bought some more of the golden syrup which I use for baking instead of vanilla essence and um, I always keep uh, one of these in the cupboard and I'm about to open my last one so I thought I'd get another one of those and because I needed to make up the points up to a certain limit um, I bought some other things which again are useful I bought peppers now these peppers were £1.65 they're like the Stamford Street, so the wonky version. Um, I don't often have peppers, so I thought I'd get those. Because they would go very well in recipes. And I treated myself to some fruit. Look, bananas. Eight small bananas there. They're yeah, small, but it looks like an average banana there. Um, the bananas were £1.25. So that came to, in total, £7.88. I paid for £7.50s worth in nectar points so that's 1500 points spent and that means that on my credit card I spent 38p so theoretically that's 38p because um, all the points come from me earning from surveys and things so it's not actually physically money I've spent on shopping either so it is completely free money um, I've also because a couple of the uh, a couple of the items that I bought were also on my nectar rewards thing. Actually, I think it might have just been the that, and I got twenty points back because people still accept that. So um, yeah, thirty eight p for that lot, and I'm going to do that recipe, that foraging recipe, as and when I can get out and get the things that I need to make it, and then I shall show you what I'm doing. So, if you do shop with Sainsbury's and you have the time and the wherewithal to do surveys, the Nectar Canvas is available through the Nectar app. You join that there and then the e-rewards program is, you just find e-rewards. I think if you type that into Google you'll probably find it. Um, again, that has an app. And so that's the total of my shopping today, 38p. Works for me. I finally caught up with my neighbour downstairs. She was outside earlier um, filling up her car with stuff and I thought, oh no, she's going. This is it, she's going. And so I nipped downstairs and stood at the front and when she came back up with the next load I just said, I just said hello and then said a um, bit of a change around of things and she was happy to talk about it. I mean, <sighs> It wasn't her stuff. She was boxing up the last of his stuff and taking it around to his because, of course, he doesn't drive, so he has to call in favours. And the situation that I thought it was, or thought it might have been, actually turned out to be exactly right. And I think a lot of the things that annoyed me about them more, more sounds more like him are things that had started to annoy her so having his mates around every single day 
the smoking, the drugs, the, you know, it, it just doesn't want to do anything. And she just decided that she wants more out of life than computer games and cannabis. Good on her. But what happens, I don't know. Um, the contract's not up for a few months, but I don't think it sounds like she's going to stay. She said he might move back in, but if he moves in, he'll probably move in with at least one of his mates, and it's going to just get worse again. And I kind of hinted that, oh, it's been nice, it's been really nice and quiet since he left. And I just said, you know, I've just noticed the, 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 change in, the change in pace. And weirdly, she sounds a lot like me. So she's been rethinking how she wants to do her life and, you know, where does she want to go? And they didn't want the same thing. So she wants to go off and travel. She's got the opportunity to go and travel for the next couple of months and um, just go and have fun and stuff. And he just wants to play computer games and smoke weed all day. And she doesn't want any of that. And I didn't realise that she's a crafter. So where it's been really, really quiet in the evenings, it's because she's just sitting there crafting. She does crochet and sewing and stuff like that. And I thought, oh my God. But I felt, talking to her, I felt quite jealous. But she's, because she's now potentially got the opportunity to just up sticks and go. They haven't been, she hadn't been settled long enough to say, I'm kind of stuck here now. Whereas I feel kind of stuck here. Um, she doesn't work full time, so although I think she could afford to stay here, I don't think she wants to because I think she's worried about, you know, turning around in, in a year's time and suddenly realising she hasn't done anything with her life that she meant to. And that's a bit of a problem that I've had, so I was quite jealous that, you know, in a few months she could be off doing the things that she wants to do. Or she might not, she might end up like me and get complacent and just not do any of it. But she's also got age on her side, because she's got to be best part of 20 years younger than me. And I would love just to be able to say, you know, sod it, I'm packing up and going. But where you go and what you do is something else entirely. Um, but again, it's given me that little push again to, to reevaluate things and think, do I want to be here another year? My contract's not up till October. But I won't have made any, any decisions by then because I don't feel like I'm in the situation to be able to. My options, you know, if I want to, if I want to live somewhere, then I have the issue that I don't earn enough to convince someone to rent to me unless I do what I do now, which is you pay the whole lot up front for either six months or a year. And there's a lot of stuff to cart around. This is the one of the things that I didn't like about moving in here is that you just end up with stuff and when I was living in house shares and I had my studio in town, I kept moving house shares, but I didn't have all the stuff that came with it. And the business was all in, all in one place and it stayed there and it was easy to manage. Whereas now, I mean, a lot of the clutter I've acquired isn't worth anything. Could just go a lot of it's charity shop furniture and things like that. But there's a lot of stuff that is now, you know, like the business, all the things that I've made for the business, yeah, I could put it into a storage unit, um, but it's still kind of like tying me down to a certain place. Um, and yeah, I, I could just jack it all in, but then you jack it all in and what do you do? Just become a full-time YouTuber. I mean, that's not where I was planning on going and you still have to live somewhere. You still have to pay whatever bills you have. So I don't know. It's... Um, you know, potentially the world is her oyster. She's got so many opportunities to do what she wants. Um, but it feels like she just needs that. Like I did when I first moved in here and I just needed that time to reset my brain that, oh look, I'm single. I can now do what I want to do on my own terms and I don't have to negotiate with somebody else or 
fit somebody else in or think about somebody else. You can just do what you want to do. So I'm jealous of that, that she gets to start that journey from scratch. I hate being tied down to things, you know. It's one of the main reasons I never bought a house, because I never, ever wanted to be tied down to one place. I've never found the place that I could imagine spending the rest of my life in, and I don't think that's ever going to change. The longest I've ever lived anywhere in one actual building was eight years. And I will be coming up to seven years here well, I'm, I'm on about um, six and a bit years now, so I've got a little bit of time to go. But I've been in this area nine years. And that's a long time for me. That's a very long time for me. It just makes me think. Still thinking about it. Still have no answers. Keep at it. So this morning I have two errands to run. One is the post office. I sold a book. I sold a copy of my book and it's going to the Netherlands. So that's good. The second is that I'm going to make an appointment with the doctor. So yesterday morning, I, I finally got around to emailing the doctor about those inflammatory marker blood test results that I had from my screening in April. I left it a bit because I wasn't sure how long the paperwork was gonna to take to get through from one place to the next. So I emailed him in the morning through the, the contact us system with my GP. And about 4.30 4 in the afternoon, he called me. He asked me a few questions and then asked me to come in and make an appointment at reception to get a blood test done and they're gonna look into it. The speed at which my doctor works is amazing. I, this is only the second time I've ever had an appointment with a doctor since I moved here. And I wanted to get something checked out. This was about two years ago. And so I emailed them in the afternoon and I had an appointment at 8 o'clock the next morning. They're just brilliant here. And I know lots of people don't have that service. I know my parents have pretty much given up trying to ever get an appointment with a doctor now. We have a closed door policy. Um, you can't even get in to make an inquiry. Very different situation here. Maybe I'm just lucky. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that complain about my doctor. But I think when you have very minimal requirements, things tend to go well. Post office done, went into the doctor's to make an appointment, and he said, we've got a slot free, do you want to wait? I was like, yeah, okay. I went in there, and there were two nurses there doing everything, because all their computers are down, so they're doing everything manually. And they had to look for my veins, because my veins are evil. And she went straight in first time, literally in and out in about three minutes. They are so efficient here. I don't know that this is a standard way doctors work. I mean, I was only seeing the nurses for the blood thing, but um, and they reckoned I would probably here in a week, but maybe two. I don't feel like I'm in any desperate rush, but um, boy, do they work fast off home. I have another repair job to do. <laughs> Look at the state of this. This is 
one of my pairs of tracky bottoms that I use for cleaning work and yes they're old and what have you but I don't want to have to buy another new item just to use for cleaning work and I don't have I've only got two pairs of tracky bottoms that I use for cleaning work if I get bleach on them they get a rip it doesn't matter but this is right underneath in between the legs and it's also really uncomfortable as well so I'm going to just patch repair it now I keep all the scraps from old projects so I've got some lengths of um, lycra that have come off um, uh, like a, a lycra skirt, a really long skirt that I had that I've rehemmed. So I'm going to cut two long sections that are long enough to cover this and then just stitch it all together. And it doesn't really matter what it looks like because it's down under the crotch so you can't even see it. So what I'm going to do is move you around a bit and then hopefully I can show you what I'm going to do. So Here's the area that needs dealing with, like so, and I'm just going to do a rough measurement for one length for this. Let's get my scissors, let's cut at the seam, so I'm just going to cut there, and then I'm just going to say right, so I'm going to cover it right up to here because you can see where it's fraying there. So I'm going to overlap it and I'm going to have that length to there, to there. And then I'm just going to double this over. It doubles the thickness of the fabric there and then hopefully that will last for a bit. So I'm just going to double that over. Let me just get the length right. It's fiddly. That gives me a rough double width. And there we have a rough double width there. And then I can just use this as a double width. It should hopefully give me a bit more life out of them. As I say, I only use them for cleaning work. And they were already old when I... I found them, actually. This is a pair of trackies that I found on the street that someone had thrown away. Um, I've had to sew up one of the pockets because it had a massive hole in it and it clearly wasn't repairable so it's only got one pocket in it anyway but for the sake of just cleaning work it really doesn't matter so how much width do I want because I quite like to lose that seam edge don't think I'm going to need to worry about the width on it that'll be sufficient okay so I'm going to take off that edge there because it's going to be a bit a bit too much I think. If it's too bulky it's going to rub as well and it's going to be uncomfortable. So I'm just going to snip that off. together again. Like that. I'm going to pop a few pins in just to keep the edges together. Like that. One there. One there. And then I'm going to put one in the middle. Should do it. Let's put a couple at the ends as well. Just to keep everything in place. Should be 
be all right. No point in making a big deal on this because the next time this goes, they will probably end up in the bin by then because I think they'll be such a mess by then. So let's try and lay these out so that it's going to be easier to pin. awkward shape to have to lie flat. Okay, so I'll probably do for this. There we go. Okay, let's give this a go. So what I'm going to do is lie this on here. Like so. Check we've got enough of an overlap there. I want to get it all the rest of my pins where I fit them. Where are my pins? And then just by going in, just going from the waistline. Turn that round a bit. Tricky to get into. Like so. And then I can just pop some pins in. At some relevant points just to keep it in one place. So, a few more in that, another one there, and there, uh, definitely not one's attached to anything, give me that one there. go. Let's do the same on the other side. That one. One there. It's about to stretch out a bit. That one a bit. Right, and then just if you see any gathers in it, you can just just smooth them out and repin. That doesn't look too bad. So now what I need to do is get this under the machine, which is going to be tricky, of course, because. It's right underneath the crotch there, but we will find a way to we'll find a way to get that under that. Right, next stage. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, that's stage one. It's not amazing, but I think it will do. What I'm now going to do is just sew straight lines across here just to stop the fabric underneath from fraying anymore, and then hopefully that will do. Um, at least it's all black on black, and hopefully it won't notice too much. So I'm just going to put that through now, and then hopefully I can get a bit more life out of these. So, there we are, as good as it's going to get unfortunately. Uh, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. There we are, a few loose threads to cut out. It'll do for now. It'll just get me through until I can find some other ones because um, I need to have both pairs because of getting them through the wash. But it'll do. Could be worse. No one's going to notice anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So that's another another little job done. It gains me some extra time, and at some point, I'm sure the next pair will make themselves known. See, that's. And that's how it will look underneath. But when you're, you're in them and your legs are together, you're not really going to see it. Hopefully no one's looking at my crotch as I'm cleaning. Pretty sure they're not. Um, <laughs> that's that. So I just thought I'd add that in. It's a little thing I've done this week. And it doesn't seem like much, but little jobs like that, when you get lots of them done, and all the little nagging tasks are done, it's like, ah, it's got that out of the way. Um, so that's that done. Brilliant.